In this lesson, we're going to cover the last big idea of the unit, which is solving logarithmic equations. Now, to be honest with you, if you have done all the homework up until now, you have solved quite a few logarithmic equations. Now, in this lesson, though, we're going to solve some more challenging logarithmic equations. Now, how are they a little more harder? Well, we're going to apply the tools that we learned throughout the unit. So for example, we're going to learn the, we're going to use the power law of logarithms, the product law of logarithms, the quotient law of logarithms, the change of base formula, all these tools that we've gained along the way, we're going to make use of them and uh, uh, let them help us solve logarithmic equations. Uh, before we solve log logarithmic equations, we're just going to look at this uh, relationship that we have here. We have log base m of a is equal to log base m of b. So try not to uh, think too hard, but what is the relationship between a and b? And you can just look at it and um, you should be able to come up with a relationship. So hopefully you say that a and b, a equals b. They're the same because I have two logarithms and the bases of the logarithm are the same. So the arguments must be the same. This is very similar to what we said about powers. If the bases of the exponents are the same, then the exponents of the, uh, of the powers must be the same. So very, very similar relationship. But you know what? Even though it's very, very logical and it makes perfect sense, we're going to prove it. So let's write it down. Log base m of a is equal to log base, oops, log base m of b. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to exponential form. So m to the power of log base m of b is equal to a. Okay, so take your time. Um, all I did was change it to from logarithmic form to exponential form. Now on the left hand side here, I have a power and a logarithm. Now the bases are both m. Now, of course, m being the base has to be greater than zero and not equal to one, which means that the left side can be simplified to b. And we talked about this earlier in the unit. Uh, and this is equal to b simply because powers and logarithms are inverse relationships. Okay. And in fact, that's the very first thing we talked about in this unit. So, uh, what we concluded earlier, a equals b, and it's a safe conclusion. Okay, we proved it here. So we're going to make use idea uh, to help us solve logarithmic equations. Not every single time, but you can. Okay, so let's do uh, let's solve these basic equations. So I could change the right hand side to be log of uh, log uh, log 10 okay because if it's a common logarithm base is 10 so log 10 must be equal to 1 and if I have log 10 here then I have two logarithms they're equal to each other with the same basis so I can set the arguments to each other or what I can do here is uh, if I want to solve for the argument what I can do is change it to exponential form Okay, so I prefer the change to exponential form, but if you prefer to do what I said earlier, then you could, uh, yeah, you could you could do that as well, and that's basically making use of what I stated here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, change it to exponential form. So ten to the power of one is equal to x plus four. So x is equal to Six. Now, before I accept this uh, x, this the solution of x equals six to be correct, I have to do one thing that I must do for all logarithmic equations. To make sure that this is an acceptable solution, I am going to state the restrictions. Okay, because you never know, this might not be a good solution, which you'll see later on uh, with our other logarithmic equations. So the restrictions. What are the restrictions on x? So logarithm of x plus 4. So x plus 4 must be greater than 0. And if x plus 4 must be greater than 0, 
then x must be greater than negative 4. Perfect. You know what? Now that I see this restriction, I'm very comfortable accepting x equals 6 as the root to my equation. And if I don't trust myself, sub it back in and left side equals right side. Okay, over here, change it to exponential form. 5 squared equals 2x minus 3. So that's 25 plus 3 divided by 2. 14. Okay, is 14 a good answer? Mm, I'm not sure. Let's write down our restrictions because 14 can very well not work out. Restriction. Okay, so 2x minus 3. I need 2x minus 3 to be greater than 0. Um, so whatever x is, it must make 2x minus 3 greater than 0. So let's see, that means x has to be greater than 3 over 2. So now 14, beautiful. I'm going to accept 14 with welcome hands here. All right, let's keep going. Beautiful, more logarithmic equations. So I see a logarithmic term on both sides. So I'm going to set it to one side. Oops, I'm going to set it to one side to help me solve for x. So add both sides by logarithm of x plus 2. Add one to both sides. Okay. And I really prefer if I had a single logarithm on the left side. Oh, luckily, I have the product law of logarithms. Okay, that allows me to express it as a single logarithm. Now, why would I prefer to express a single logarithm? Because I can change it to, um, I can solve for x by changing it to exponential form. And I could only do that when it was a single logarithm. Beautiful. So 10, it's a common logarithm. So the base is 10. Oops, there's a plus here. That's x plus 2. Okay, and now solve for x. So expand, set equal 0, and you have a quadratic equation. So I'm going to x squared plus x minus 2 equals 10. And then x squared plus x minus 12 equals 10. What multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1, that's 4, and negative 3. Simple trinomial. So x equals negative 4, or x equals 3. Hmm, can I accept those two answers? I don't know. Let's find our restrictions. Okay, so... The values of x that I can accept must make x minus 1 to be greater than 0 as well as x plus 2 to be greater than 0. Because if either of these uh, arguments are negative or, or 0, then that would not be good. It would be undefined. So x minus 1, so we did number lines before, so I'll do that again. So x minus 1. When is x minus 1 greater than 0? When x is greater than 1. When is x plus 2 greater than 0? When x is greater than negative 2. So when is x minus 1 and x plus 2 greater than 0? When x is greater than 1. Okay. In order for these ter both these logarithmic terms to be defined, you need x to be greater than 1. Uh-oh. So that means negative 4 is an extraneous root. I solved for it algebraically but we cannot accept it. Somewhere along the way, one of these steps introduced this root. So you know what? Which step was it? Which step here introduced the extraneous root of negative four? So take your time, pause the video, look carefully. There was one step here that introduced the root. Okay, so hopefully you found it, but negative four came about from here, the second line, to here, okay? Once I applied the product law of uh, product law of logarithms, I introduced the solution of negative 4. Because if I were to hide the first two lines, okay, if this was the question to begin with, negative 4 would be perfectly fine. Negative 4 would be a perfect answer there, okay? But unfortunately, this was not the question. 
Okay, I can't change the question. So by applying the product law of exponents, sorry, product law of logarithms, you introduced a root of negative four. So uh, be wary when you when you have um, uh, answers for your logarithmic equations. Somewhere along the line, you may introduce a, an extraneous root. So it doesn't matter where you introduce it, <laughs> your job is to identify the extraneous root, okay? Uh, but it is helpful if you know which step created that problem. Okay, let's solve uh, example 1D. So when I look at this equation, I'm going to apply the power law of logarithms. Okay, when I cube root, that's the same as an exponent of one third. And I saw the one third and two thirds, so that can simplify the relationship. And then exponential form. And then factor, simple trinomial. What multiplies the negative 100 and adds to 48? And the answer is 50 and negative 2. So x equals to negative 50 or x equals to 2. Once again, are those solutions acceptable? Let's find out our restrictions. Okay, so when is x squared plus 48x greater than zero? x squared plus 48x. You know what? Um, to s determine that, I'm going to factor. Okay, so if I had a function f of x equals x times uh, the binomial x plus 48, you should see you should see this parabola. Okay. Hopefully, that parabola tells you the restriction. This parabola is greater than zero when uh, this is greater than zero, the argument is greater than zero. So what, these two match up. So when the parabola is above the x-axis, x squared plus 48x is greater than zero. So that will, so by looking at this parabola, we can determine the restriction. So when x is less than negative 48 or when x is greater than zero, okay? Those are our restrictions. So negative 50, hey, that's less than negative 48. Uh, two, uh, yep, that's greater than zero. So I know most students, when I do this question, when they see negative 50, they want to reject it right away. But you know what? It works out. And if you really uh, don't trust negative 50, uh, just sub it back into the equation. And I assure you, left side equals right side. Okay, let's do example two. So essentially, this is an identity. <laughs> Okay, I know you thought that identities were done with it once we finished trig, but you can prove logarithmic identities too. Now, before I prove this identity, I'm going to make our lives easy by proving a different identity. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the identity I want to prove. So this is actually a really nice relationship. This is actually built off of the change of base formula. So... When you switch the argument or interchange the argument and the base of the logarithm, you can take the reciprocal, okay, and they will be equal. So let's prove this to be true. So I'm going to work with the right hand side. So I'm going to use the change of base formula for the denominator. Okay, and when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be log A over log B. So I have 1 times log A over log B, which is log A over log B. And what's log A over log B? Hey, change the base formula. It's log base B of A, which is equal to the left side. Okay, so this is a very nice relationship. It allows you to interchange the argument and the base of the logarithm. And uh, just remember to take the reciprocal. So I'm gonna prove this identity. So I'm gonna start with the left side.
and I'm going to use the, use the relationship I just showed you. I'm going to interchange the base and the argument, but I have to take the reciprocal. And then I'm going to apply the product law of logarithms because these two logarithms have the same base. And then I'm going to use that relationship one more time. I'm going to interchange the argument and the base of the logarithm. Hey, all done. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so for example three, uh, we have basically a system and we want to solve for a and b. So if log a plus log b equals 2, then we can use our product law of logarithms. So log a b equals 2 and 10 squared. So I'm going to change it to exponential form. So 100 equals a b. Okay, oh, I'm going to label our equations. So let's say b is equal to 100 over a. Okay, so let's Let's sub this in, also equation three, just like the, the way you solve systems in grade 10. I'm gonna solve this by substitution. Sub three into one. So I have root A plus root B, which is now 100 over A, right? Because B is 100, 100 over A equals eight. Ooh, square roots, you know what? I don't like that, I'm gonna square both sides. Okay, so this will give me perfect square trinomial, so. Okay, so this root A times root of 100 over a, that actually works out very nicely because you'll be left with root 100. Uh, you can think about what you did in grade nine when you have uh, root a times root b is root of a, b. So I'll show an extra step just in case. All right. Okay, so that works out very nice. So you're just left with root 100. Okay, so this is going to be 20. I'm gonna subtract both sides by 20. So I get a plus 100 over a equals 44. This, this is 20, right? Subtract those, sides, those both sides by 20, so I get 44. Let's clean this up. Multiply both sides by a and set equal to zero. So you should get a squared minus 44a plus 100 equals zero. And now uh, you can try to factor that, but unfortunately no two numbers or no two whole number or integers multiplied 100 and add to negative four. Or uh, sorry, rational numbers. But anyways, um, we are going to use a quadratic formula. So a is equal to 44 plus minus negative 44 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, this works out very nicely. That's 44 plus minus 1536 over 2. And based on the uh, root 8, or root of a b equals root a root b you can simplify that so this will be uh, 22 plus minus so root 1 5 3 6 actually is 16 root 6 right because surprisingly 256 is a factor of 1 5 3 6 oops I should change it so this is 44, now it becomes 22. Okay, so now what is B? So you know what, I'll leave this as an exercise for you. But B is equal to 100 over 22 
plus 8 root 6 and you can do the math or b equals 100 over 22 minus 8 root 6 now I want you to do this math yourself you can just rationalize the denominator and you'll get 22 minus 8 root 6 here and you get 22 plus 8 root 6 here okay I can prove to you that that is correct because let's do this 22 minus 8 root 6 times 22 plus 8 root 6 beautiful so it works out because we said uh, from the very beginning a b equals 100 therefore a b equals uh, 22 plus 8 root 6 for a but then B will be 22 minus 8 root 6. So if A is 22 plus 8 root 6, then B is 22 minus 8 root 6, based on the math I showed you here. Or AB can be 22 minus 8 root 6 and 22 plus 8 root 6. Okay. And we forgot the state restriction. So let's just quickly state restriction on A and B. So restrictions up top here. Restrictions. A has to be greater than zero and B has to be greater than zero. And of course, our solution is still perfectly fine. So hopefully um, the, this lesson was okay. We solved a bunch of logarithmic equations. We made use of the power law, product law. Uh, there will be other questions that make use of, makes use of the quotient law. Uh, we talked about a different um, relationship using the change of base formula which allows you to change or interchange the base and the argument of the logarithm so there are a lot of good things in this lesson so hopefully the homework is okay